Hello class, welcome to this lesson on graphing rational functions. Right, so uh, we're going to be um, all about graphing rational functions today. So how can we uh, go about doing this? What is the process for graphing them? The learning goal is to be able to graph translations of what we call the reciprocal function and graph generic rational functions. All right, so the vocab includes uh, asymptotes, rational expressions, rational function, and the reciprocal function. So let's talk about the reciprocal function first. The, reci the reciprocal function maps every non-zero real number to its reciprocal. So for example, if you have you know, the value x is equal to one and you plug it into the reciprocal function, well, you're gonna get the reciprocal of one, right? The reciprocal of one is, well, it's, so one is the same thing as one over one. If you flip it, you still get one over one. If you get if you have x is equal to one half, well then if you plug it into the reciprocal function, you're going to get y equals two over one when you flip it. So the reciprocal function just means you uh, you you flip the fraction and that gives you your result. So the reciprocal function is given by y equals one over x, and the reciprocal function has uh, some key features to it. It has what we, uh, what we call asymptotes. An asymptote is a line that the graph approaches but never actually reaches. Uh, the reciprocal function has two types of these asymptotes. It has a vertical asymptote and a horizontal asymptote. So we'll see how that looks like when we actually draw the reciprocal function. We're going to do a sketch of that in the next uh, slide here. The asymptotes here guide the end behavior of the function. So we'll be able to see how this looks like. All right, so let's talk about the reciprocal function. Let's graph the reciprocal function and kind of illustrate these asymptotes. So first, in order to graph this, uh, I'm going to first set up an xy table, a basic xy table, just so that you know how it works. So we're going to have some several values of x that we'll pick. You can pick multiple values. Let's do negative 2, negative 1, Let's do 0, 1, and 2. Those are usually the values that we pick, so we might as well just choose those values. So if we plug in negative 2 into this function, right? We're plugging in negative 2 into x, then we get 1 over negative 2, right? That's if we plug in negative 2 into you know x here, right? Which goes into down here. So that'll give us negative 1 half. So that's it. That's, that's our guy, negative 1 half which is negative 0.5. Now let's we plug it into negative one, well we get one over negative one, which is just negative one. Now let's plug it into, uh, let's start plugging this into, for example, uh, zero, let's do zero. Y equals one over zero. Well, we can't, we can't divide any, we can't divide by zero. Okay, so we know that zero divided by one is zero, but one divided by zero is what we call undefined. We can't do it. We can't divide by zero. We can divide into zero, but we cannot divide by zero. Okay, so we can't divide by zero. It's just not possible. It's what we call undefined or in infinite. Uh, it goes to infinity. So this will say that it's undefined. And then we'll do one over one. Well, we know that one divided by one is one. So that's just gonna be one. And then if we plug in two, we got one over two, which is just one over two. So that's it. So now we think we're ready to graph this. We have you know, enough information for the most part to be able to do a basic sketch. So uh, let's do the basic sketch here. So you see this point where it was undefined? This right here is our vertical asymptote. And so that's given by, I'm going to just kind of do a dashed a dashed line there. Okay, and that's saying that at that zero mark, vertically, 
the graph approaches that but never reaches it and that's because it's undefined okay because it's undefined it doesn't have a point on that line on that zero mark okay so that's our vertical asymptote now let's do now let's go ahead and graph the points that we have here so you got negative 2 negative 1 1 and 2 so when we plug in negative 1 we got negative 1 so that's you know around here when we plug in negative 2 we got negative 1 half so it actually got smaller right so it got smaller now you can imagine that if we continue going if we plug in like negative 3 right if we plug in negative 3 here we'll get negative 1 third if we plug in negative 4 we we'll get negative 1 fourth so it just gets smaller and smaller until it approaches zero so if I were to plug in negative 100 right all the way on the left side here well this will become negative 1 over 100 and negative 1 over 100 is really close to zero so notice that if I plug in negative a million it'll just be one negative 1 over a million which is even closer to zero but it never reaches zero it just gets close to zero and that is what we call our horizontal asymptote. So this graph will continue to approach, 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 but never actually cross that x-axis. So that is what we call our horizontal asymptote. And I'm going to do that in blue here. So so that means that y equals 0, which is this blue line, is our horizontal asymptote. And x is equal to 0 is our vertical asymptote. All right, so now let's go ahead and uh, continue this graph. So we know that if I were to plug in you, this guy right here, if I were to plug in like negative one half, let's plug, um, let's say, let's say let's say we plug in negative one half. What happens to the graph? Well, it's going to be one over negative one half. It's just basically gonna it's gonna um, do the reciprocal of negative one half. The reciprocal of negative one half is just negative two, right? So it's just gonna flip it because that that's why we call it a reciprocal function. It flips things. So it'll, if you plug in like negative one half, then you're gonna go all the way down to negative two. So it goes deeper. So as you're approaching this, it's going deeper and deeper and deeper into, um, into the negative direction. So now we have a graph that looks kind of like this. It's a curved shape and it's approaching the blue on the left side and it's approaching the red or pink on the bottom. So now let's do the other part of the graph. When x is equal to 1, well, we have y equals 1. When x is equal to 2, we have y equals 1 half. So we see that it's getting smaller. If we were to plug in 3, then it'll be 1 third. If we were to plug in 1 uh, 4, then it'd be 1 fourth and smaller still. So it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller on that right side. And that's because we have our horizontal asymptote there. And then what's going to happen? Well, it's going to increase, increase on this this side until it approaches the vertical asymptote. So again, let's go back to the definition of the asymptote. An asymptote is a line that it approaches, but usually never crosses, right? So usually it does not cross. So it just approaches it. So you can kind of think of the vertical and horizontal asymptote as guides to help you graph the function. So if we can find these uh, asymptotes, then it'll help us graph. All right, and this right here is our reciprocal function. This right here is our reciprocal function, y equals one over x. That's the basic um, shape of that graph. And we're gonna be doing transformations of that graph. All right, so the general transform version of the reciprocal function is a over x minus h plus k. So remember that the reciprocal function was 1 over x. But this time, you can have stuff in the numerator. Instead of just, just being 1, 
you can have a generic number a there where the numerator is like two, three, whatever. And you can have a transformation here. So you can have this being minus two, for example, and then having a plus five on the outside. Okay, so like, so you can transform this so that it shifts. So the H is the shift left or right. The K is the shift up or down. And kind of like it was in our other functions, right? When we did the parabola, we know that it was X squared. But then when we shifted it, it was X minus H squared plus K. Same thing here. We have an H that shifts it left or right. And we have a K that shifts it up or down. So it's the same deal here. And A, usually we had an A here, right? And that A will tell us whether it's stretched or compressed. Remember that if A is bigger than zero, it's a vertical stretch. Or A is bigger than one, I mean. If A is bigger than one, it's a vertical stretch. If A is less than one, but greater than zero, like a fraction, then it was a vertical compression. Okay, so these are the just things that kind of, you know, kind of reviewing those transformations. So very simple because now if you have something like this, where you have y equals two over x minus one plus five, well now you can kind of tell that a is two, right? So that means that it's vertically stretched. Uh, we know that h is one. You can kind of tell that h is one here. And we can kind of tell that k is five. So that means know that if h is one, that means it's going to the right one. And if k, so if h, if h is positive, it's going to go to the right. If k is positive, it's going to go up, so up five. So we know that we can graph. We know that our generic one over x looks like this, right? Well, then we know now that we can shift it right one and then up five. So we can take our vertical asymptote and we, now we can shift it to the right one. So now it's like here, right? And we can take our original horizontal asymptote, which was at, you know, zero, and we could shift it up five. So we could shift it one, two, three, four, five. So now we could take that and shift it up. And then we can draw our new graph now. So now we can draw our shifted version of that graph. So now it looks kind of like this. And so very, very um, easy. Once you got this form, you can graph any of the other forms. So let's look at an example of that. So let's graph uh, g of x equals one over x minus three plus two. What are the equations of the asymptotes? What are the domain and range? So we, ha we haven't actually talked about the domain and range so, uh, of the other one. So let's actually go back to figure out the domain and range. Uh, going back to this one right here, because we didn't actually talk about domain and range. Um, let's talk about the domain first. Remember the domain is the domain is telling you the x values, right? So the only x value that I don't see here, right? I have all these x values in the negative direction. I have all these x values in the negative. Uh, the only x value that I do not have is x is equal to zero. I don't have, you know, an x value at zero anywhere on this. And that's because of that vertical asymptote. So that means that the domain is x cannot equal to zero. Basically saying that x cannot equal to that uh, vertical asymptote. And our range, well, what's the only y value that I do not have? Well, I have all of these y values here, the, and I have all the positive y values here. So I have the negative y values and I have the positive y values. The only y value that I do not have is the blue region, right? Which is y equals zero which is our horizontal asymptote. So our range is y does not equal to zero. So very simple, just domain is x cannot equal to the vertical asymptote. Range is y cannot equal to the horizontal asymptote. So that was our domain and range. All right, so now let's go back to this graph. What are the equations of the asymptotes? What are the domain and range? So this graph that I gave you here is the reciprocal function one over x. Okay, so that's the parent function. So this is like the parent function. Uh, for the reciprocal function. Okay, so now we know, you know, what the parent function looks like, we know that we have one over x minus three plus two. So that means if we compare it to this, right, if we compare it to a over x minus h plus k, well, we can see that h is three. And we can see that k is two. 
So if h is positive, that means it's going to the right 3. And if k is positive, it's going up 2. So all we got to do is we got to shift, we have to shift the vertical, so that we have to shift the vertical asymptote or the, um, we have to shift the vertical asymptote to the, to the right three. So if the vertical asymptote is here, right, then it's going to be shifted to the right three. So let me do that first. So this right here is normally our vertical asymptote, but now it's going to the right three. One, two, three. So our vertical asymptote is now here. Okay, so I'm going to erase this now. I don't have that vertical asymptote anymore. And then our, and I realized I switched the colors. Uh, blue is vertical and red is horizontal. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to keep it so that blue is vertical from the here on out and the red or pink is horizontal. And then, uh, so K is equal to two. So normally our horizontal goes like this, but this time it's gonna go up two, right? So it's gonna go shift it up two. So now we no longer have this guy and we can draw our new uh, function now. So we know that it goes like this and then goes like this. And there you go, there's our graph. That's all we needed uh, to do for that graph. Very simple. All right, go ahead and uh, give it a try um, using the transformations that we discussed. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, look at the function and see if we can identify the transformations. So again, normally we gotta compare this to one over x minus, or a over x minus h um, plus k, right? The only thing that really matters here is really the uh, the h and the k. And, and also what matters is if a is negative or not. So like if there's a negative here or something. Uh, that's the only really thing that matters. The stretch and, and compress doesn't really matter too much when you're drawing, when you're sketching the graph because we're just sketching. All right, so here if we compare these two forms, uh, h is actually negative two, and the reason being is that you can rewrite this as one over x minus negative two, and then plus negative four. So you can rewrite this, right? So now we know that h with the minus, you see the minus here and the minus there, so that means h has to be negative two. And then we see here we got a plus k, so we got a plus here, we got a plus here, so k has to be negative four. So now we know h is negative two, k is negative four. If h is negative, that means that you're going left two. And if k is negative, that means you're going down. So we're going down four here. So now we can go ahead and uh, draw our graph. So if we draw our graph, well, we know that our, our vertical asymptote here, well, we know that it's going left two, right? So that means that our vertical asymptote is going, normally it starts at the zero, but it's going, it's shifting left to negative two. And then for the horizontal, normally starts at zero here, but it's going down for one, two, three, four. So this is negative four. So now we kind of know here that our horizontal asymptote uh, is y equal to negative four. Our vertical asymptote is x equals negative two. So we know our asymptotes now. And we know that our graph is going to you know approach the asymptote there, approach the vertical asymptote on that left side, and then it goes down like this. It always has that pattern. Now the only time that that pattern flips is if you have a negative number here. So if you got a negative number there, that just means that it's gonna flip this way and that way. So I'll give you another mini example. So if you had the same function, but you have a negative instead, right? Like you have a negative Uh, like that, something like that. Well, it's going to look the exact same, you know, where it, it has this 
and it has this and negative two. Oops, it should be blue. But since it's negative, that means everything flips. So that means everything will go. So instead of it going down like this, it's going to go like this first and then like this. So that's what it looks like if it's like flipped. If, if there's a negative sign, it just flips everything. Okay, so just to give you a counter example, another example there. <clears throat> All right, so now let's talk about rational functions, a generic rational function. So a rational expression is an expression that can be expressed as the ratio, ratio means fraction, of two polynomials, such as p of x over q of x, where q cannot equal zero. Why can q not equal zero? Well, because the denominator can't be zero. So the denominator can never be zero. Why can't it be zero? Because we cannot divide by zero, remember? We cannot do that. We can't divide by zero. So therefore, the denominator can't be zero. So a rational function is a function that has a rational expression in it, right? So it's a function defined by a rational expression. So basically, it has the function notation. The domain of such a function is all values of x for which the denominator cannot be zero. So in order to find the domain, all you have to do is figure out what makes the denominator zero. Speaking of which, uh, we need to define the domain and range of this guy here. Since we know that the vertical asymptote x is negative two, that means the domain x cannot equal to negative two. And because the horizontal asymptote is y equals negative four, that means that the range y cannot equal to negative four. So basically, if you know your vertical asymptote and horizontal asymptote, you basically know your domain and range. Quick side note there. So let's look at an example here. So g of x is 4x over x minus 3. So 4x over x minus 3, which you can tell that looks like the form p of x over q of x, right? Where you have functions of x on the top and the bottom. And we know that the domain cannot be three. How do I know that the domain x cannot be equal to three? Well, because what makes that denominator equal to zero? So you're gonna set that denominator equal to zero and you know that x is equal to three. But since the denominator cannot be zero, we say that the domain x cannot equal to three. Okay, so that's how you find the domain. And in, and in fact, that's how you find your vertical asymptote as well. So we know that the vertical asymptote is x equals three, but the domain cannot equal to three. All right, so find asymptotes of a rational function. How do we do that? Well, we kind of we kind of already talked about it with vertical asymptotes. For the vertical asymptotes, you got to figure out the x values where the function is undefined, which means where the denominator is equal to zero. So in other words, to find the vertical asymptote, set the denominator equal to zero and solve. So for this example, the denominator is x minus two. So I set that equal to zero. And I know that if I add two to both sides, that'll give me x is equal to uh, two, which means the vertical asymptote at x equals two. Now, horizontal asymptote is a little different um, because you have, to, you have to look at three cases here. So the first case is if the degree, remember the degree is the highest the highest power, right? The highest power. So degree means highest power. So if the degree or the highest power of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, this means you have no, this means that you have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. So for example, the degree here is one, the degree here is two, right? Because the highest power is two. Well, one is less than two. So this, this means that we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero for that example. For case two, if the degree of the numerator is greater than that of the denominator, there are no horizontal asymptotes. So here, the degree is two, that's the highest power. Here, the degree is one. So two is greater than one. This means you have no horizontal asymptote. Uh, case three, if the degree of the numerator and the denominator are the same, then that means the horizontal asymptote is the ratio, the fraction 
of the leading coefficients. So for example, the degree here is 2, the degree here is 2, right? They have the same degree, 2 is equal to 2. So we take the ratio of the leading coefficients. Well, what's the leading coefficient of the numerator? The leading coefficient of the numerator is 2, right? That's the number in front of the highest power. And then the leading coefficient of the denominator is 1. There's an invisible 1 in front of that x, right? So then you take the ratio of those coefficients, so you just divide those. So 2 over 1 is 2. So that means we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 2 over 1, or 2. That's all you got to do. So I'll give you another example. So let's say we had f of x equals 3x cubed plus 2x squared plus 1 over x squared minus 4x cubed. Well, in this case, the degree here is 3. Highest power is 3. The degree here is 3 because the highest power is 3. Uh, the leading coefficient for the numerator is 3. The leading coefficient for the denominator is negative 4. So we have here 3 over negative 4, which is negative 3 fourths. So our horizontal asymptote is negative 3 fourths for that example, for that mini one. So note, if your function is written in the transform reciprocal form, which is the a over x minus h plus k form, that means that your vertical asymptote is simply given by x equals h. And your vertical asymptote is simply given by, um, is simply given by y equals k. So if you know, for example, this one, 2 over x minus 5 plus 3, well, I can, I, I can easily identify that my vertical asymptote is x equals 5. I can easily identify that my horizontal asymptote is y equals 3. So that's it. That's all you got to do. So once you know that, then you can graph a function. All right, so find the vertical and horizontal asymptotes of the rational function 3x minus 2 over x squared plus 7x plus 12. All right, so if we want, let's go ahead and uh, do the vertical asymptotes first. So remember, to find the vertical asymptotes, you have to set the denominator equal to zero, right? So the denominator is x squared plus 7x plus 12 equals zero. Because we can't, we can't have the denominator being zero. And that's what the vertical asymptote is, where the denominator is equal to zero. So we got we to gotta solve this for zero. How do we do it? Well, we use the techniques that we did in the other chapters, right? So factoring, all that stuff. Quadratic formula, if you want. But here, we can actually factor this. So we're going to factor this. And we're going to have 12 on top, 7 on the bottom. So we know that 3 times 4 is 12, and 3 plus 4 is 7. So there's our guy. So now we have here x plus 3, x plus 4 is equal to 0. So then uh, what makes, then we're going to use the zero product property, right? So where we set each of the, them equal to zero. So x plus 3 equals zero. x plus 4 equal to zero. So that means x is equal to negative 3. x is equal to negative 4. And those are our vertical asymptotes. So our vertical asymptotes are x equals negative 3. x equals negative 4. So we have two vertical asymptotes here so far. Now let's do our horizontal asymptotes. So in order to do our horizontal asymptotes, well, we need to look at the degrees, right? So the degree of this is 1, because the highest power is 1 here, right? Invisible 1. The highest power in the denominator is 2. So 1 is less than 2. This means that we're going to look at our cases. This is under case 1, where it was less than. So if it was less than, that means that uh, we have a vertical or uh, horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. Okay, so we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. So that's our horizontal asymptote. All right, so that's it. So now we know our vertical and horizontal asymptotes, and we can uh, actually draw a quick sketch from that uh, relatively simply, but we'll do that uh, later.
Right, go ahead and uh, give it a try. Find the horizontal and vertical asymptotes for each function. All right, so let's do the vertical uh, asymptotes for the first function first. So vertical asymptote, uh, we need to actually set the denominator to zero. All right, so now we want to be able to factor this. So we got negative eight on top, we have negative two on the bottom. So factors of negative eight to add up to negative two. Uh, so that would be four times two is eight. Uh, and if we had negative four, negative four plus two is negative two. So that works. So we have x minus four, x minus two equals zero. Use the ZPP here, the zero product property x minus 4 equals 0, x minus 2 equals 0, x is equal to 4, and x is equal to 2. So those are our vertical asymptotes. All right, and then uh, next we want to uh, find the horizontal asymptotes. Now we know that the degree of the numerator is 2. We know that the degree of the denominator is 2 as well. So 2 is equal to 2. That means we need to uh, take the ratio of the leading coefficients. So that means that we have the leading coefficient of that is two. The leading coefficient here is an invisible one. So we got two over one. So our horizontal asymptote is we have two. So y equals two over one, which is equal to two. Uh, so we have y equals two. All right, now let's look at part B. So we're gonna set for the vertical asymptote, we're gonna set the denominator equal to zero. All right, um, so right here we have to, we have to uh, solve this. Now there's a couple ways that we could do this. We can factor it or we can just solve it like normal. I'm just going to solve it like we normally like we normally would. Just add 12 to both sides. 3x squared equals 12. We can divide by 3. x squared equals 4. And then uh, remember that the only way to get rid of a squared is with a square root. Um, but if you do the square root, you need to make sure that you include the plus or minus sign. So we have here x is equal to, well, the square root of 4 is 2, but we have 2 and negative 2, right? Because we have the plus or minus versions. So those that's a vertical asymptote. These are our possible vertical asymptotes. Here's the tricky one about this, though. Before you finalize this and say that this is a vertical asymptote, there's a tricky one to this. Because, yes, these are the possible vertical asymptotes. However, look at the numerator. We can actually factor the numerator, right? So um, we could factor the numerator and we can actually factor this too. So, so let me show you how to do it when we factor this. Okay, so this right here, we can factor this with an x table. Four on top and five on the bottom. Well, that's gonna be one and four. So we have x plus one, x plus four. Now for this bottom one, let me do this off to the side. You can, full, you can factor out the three. If you factor out the three, we have x squared minus four. If I pull out the three from this. Now this x squared minus four is a difference of squares. Remember the difference of squares, a squared minus b squared is a plus b, a minus b. So this can factor as x minus two and x plus two. So this can factor out as x plus two and x minus two. Now if, if, um, the x plus four cancels out with the x plus two, like if let's pretend that this was x plus two as well, then these would also cancel and therefore you would not have a vertical asymptote here if it canceled. However, since nothing canceled, we are perfectly fine. Uh, just keep that in mind that sometimes they'll try to trick you 
and if the, any of the factors cancel, then that's how you then that's how you know that to cancel out one of those vertical asymptotes. But here, none of the vertical asymptotes cancel, so we have both of our vertical asymptotes intact, and so that's my final answer. I just wanted to let you know a, a side note for that. All right. So example four, so let's graph a function of the form ax plus b over cx plus d. In order to graph a function of this form, you can either use long division or you can just find the horizontal vertical asymptotes the way we showed you earlier. I wanna show you how to do both ways because we're gonna to have to graph this. So we're gonna show you how to graph it you know, using either way. So let's do the long division method first. So we have here 2x plus 1 is being divided by 3x minus 4, which means we'll have to do long division here. So you have 3x minus 4 on the outside. We have 2x plus 1 on the inside. So this is, <clears throat> um, this is a little uh, easier just because we don't have as much division to do. Uh, but in this in this way, it's a little bit harder just because now you have to figure out, well, we want to get 2x, right? How do we get 2x from 3? Well, I know that if I multiply 3 by 1 and a half, or if I multiply uh, 3 by 2 thirds, it'll get me to, uh, to 2. How do I know that? Well, 3 times 2 thirds. The 3's cancel, leaving me with 2. So I know that I can do this as 2 thirds. Okay, so now if I do 2 thirds times 3, 3 times 2 is 6, 6 divided by 3 is 2. See, that's a little tricky because of the fraction. Um, but sometimes you'll, ha you'll encounter those. And then 2 thirds times 4, what's 2 thirds times 4? Uh, well, 2 times 4 is 8, and then so you get 8 over 3. So we get negative 8 over 3. And then we subtract. That cancels. Two negatives become a positive. And then 1 is the same thing as 1 over 1, right? But so we can multiply for a common denominator by 3 and get 3 over 3. So then we know that 3 over 3 plus 8 over 3 is 11 over 3. Okay, so that's our remainder. So our remainder is 2, you know, so we have 2 thirds plus, uh, so our final answer basically, so this is our remainder. Uh, that's our remainder right there. So then if we were to divide this, this is 2 thirds plus 11 thirds over 3x minus 4. That's the quotient form um, that you may have seen. So that's the quotient form. Uh, so that's if you did the long division way. Now this already tell the good thing about this is this already tells you, um, you can use this to tell, you know, like what the vertical asymptote is, like how much is shifted, all that stuff. But I wanted, I wanted to you know, just kind of refresh your memory on long division. However, if you, don't per, if you don't like long division, that's fine. We can do this without long division. We can simply find the vertical asymptote the normal way. So vertical asymptote, set the denominator equal to zero. So now we have to add four to both sides. We can get three X equals four, divide by three on both sides. And that is our vertical asymptote. All right, horizontal asymptote. We have um, our, uh, let's, let me rewrite the function here. So the degree of that is one, the degree of that is one. So we need our leading coefficients, two and three. So our horizontal asymptote is y equals two over three. All right, so now we can graph this. So let's show you how to graph now. Graphing is kind of easy once you know the vertical and horizontal asymptote. So uh, y equal, or x equals 4 thirds, that's about 1 and a third, so it's a little bit over 1, 1 and some change. It's like around here. So that's our vertical asymptote. Horizontal asymptote is 2 thirds less than 1. Now, here's what I suggest for graphing. 
what I would suggest is plugging in the number to the left of the vertical asymptote and then plugging in a number to the right of the vertical asymptote. Okay, so a number to the left of the vertical asymptote would be like x equals zero. So let's plug in zero and then let's plug in a number to the right of the vertical asymptote like two. Okay, so let's plug in zero into the original function. So the original function was y equals 2x minus 3, or it's 2x plus 1, I'm sorry, 2x plus 1 over 3x minus 4. Okay, so let's plug in 0 into this. So we get y equals 2 times 0 plus 1 over 3 times 0 minus 4. Well, if we plug that in, this goes away. So we got one over negative four, so one negative one fourth. So that number is negative, right? And that means that it is below my red. It is below the horizontal asymptote. So since if I plug in zero, I'm gonna get negative one fourth around here. That means that this graph behaves like this, approaches that, and then it approaches that. Since we use those as our guide, right? So now we know that it has to behave like that. And then now let's plug in a number uh, such as 2. We got y equals 2 times 2 plus 1, 3 times 2 minus 4. Well, 2 times 2 is 4, 4 plus 1 is 5, 3 times 2 is 6. All right, and then uh, 3 times 2 is 6, 6 minus 4 is 2. So we got 5 over 2. So that means 5 over 2 is about 2.5. So that means if we plug in two, we get 2.5. That means we're above our red line. So that means we're like somewhere over here, which means it has to behave like that. So this is like the perfect way to be able to tell like what direction it goes, if it goes above or below, just by plugging in that test point on the left and the right side. Now, if we knew that, that if we plugged in two and we got like a negative number like here, then that means it has to behave like this, right? So that's how you, know, you could tell you know, what direction it behaves. All right, so now let's look at, uh, let's go ahead and give it a try. try. Try to graph each function and then we'll go over it in a little bit. All right, so let's look at this one. So our vertical asymptote, we want to set the denominator equal to zero. So we subtract eight on both sides. We get x equals negative eight. So that's our vertical asymptote. Now let's look at our horizontal asymptote. We want to uh, figure out the degree. So the degree here is one, highest power is one. The highest power here is one as well. So the leading coefficient here is four, the leading coefficient here is an invisible one. So the horizontal asymptote is y equals four over one or y equals four. So we can graph it right away. y equals four, three, three, four. Draw that, draw our vertical asymptote at negative eight. All right, so now we have that. Now we can, let's plug in a number to the left of negative eight, like negative nine. Let's plug in a, a number to the right of negative eight, like zero. Zero is pretty easy to do. Uh, now let's plug in negative nine first, right? So we, our original function was y equals four x minus three over x plus eight. So let's plug in x equals negative nine. So we get y equals four times negative nine minus three over negative nine plus eight. So uh, we got negative 39, if we did that on the calculator, and then negative nine plus one is negative one. So we get 39. So if we plug in negative nine, we get 39. So it's all the way up here, right? So that means we know that it behaves like that, where it's approaching that blue. And now let's plug in x equals zero. So we get y equals four times zero minus three, and then zero plus eight. So we get negative three over eight. So we get a negative number. So that means it's 
you know, it's if we plug in zero, we get a negative number around here. Let me uh, erase this because it's kind of hard to tell uh, here. So if we plug in zero, we get you know a number like around here, and since it's below, that means we know that it acts it it has to approach there and it has to approach here. Okay, so if it's below the red, then that means it's going to be approaching the red from the bottom. If it's above the red, it's going to be approaching the red from the top, you know, uh, from the top side. And that's our graph. Now let's look at this one, vertical asymptote. We set the denominator equal to zero, so x minus one equals zero, x is equal to one, done. Uh, horizontal asymptote, let's look at our degrees. Degree here is one, degree here is one. So we look at our leading coefficients, invisible one here. So it's y equals three over one, or y equals three. All right, so now we draw a quick graph. We have vertical asymptote at one, horizontal asymptote at three, and then let's plug in a number to the left of one, like zero, and then let's plug in like uh, to the right of one, like two. So if we plug in zero, we have, we're gonna plug in zero into you know this function, the original, y equals three times zero plus two over zero minus one. So we get two over negative one, which is negative two. So that means we, if we plug in zero, we get negative two. That means it has to behave like that and like that. Now let's plug in x is equal to uh, 2. We get y equals 3 times 2 plus 2 over 2 minus 1. 3 times 2 is 6. 6 plus 2 is 8. So we get 8 over 1, which is 8. So that means we're all the way up here at 8 when we plug in 2. So that means we're above the red. So that means we're approaching the red down there, approaching the blue there. And that's our graph. Pretty straightforward to do the graph once you know the vertical and horizontal asymptotes for these kind of functions. Now it can get a little bit more complicated when you have multiple vertical asymptotes, etc. Which we'll be doing in the next uh, example. So for example 5, you could have more than one vertical asymptote uh, and that will Kind of complicate it a little bit. It'll make it. It'll make the graph look complicated, but the process is the same. It's just a little more work. So let's do the vertical asymptote. So we set the denominator equal to zero, and we see about factoring it. So negative fifteen on top, two on the bottom. So that means it's going to be five and negative three. So we can factor it. X plus five. X minus three equals zero. Let's use the ZPP x equals negative 5, x equals 3. So those are my two vertical asymptotes. And then we need to find our horizontal asymptote. Let's look at our degrees. The degree here is 2. The degree here is 2. The highest power is 2. So look at your leading coefficients, 1 and 1. So it's y equals 1 over 1, which is y equals to 1. So we got our horizontal asymptote. We got our vertical asymptotes we can kind of we can uh, start doing the sketch here so we had x is equal to three one two three so we have that vertical asymptote there we have negative five and we have our horizontal at one all right, so notice now that we have three we have three regions here, right? We have region one, we have region two, we have region three. So we have to test uh, multiple x values. So let's test to the left of this first uh, area, like negative six. Let's test zero here, and let's test x equals four there, and that'll tell us what direction. Uh, so this middle region is a little more complicated, so we may need more than one point. The reason why this middle region is complicated is because you have the horizontal asymptote kind of here, so we know it cannot cross, right, uh, that. So there's a couple of things that could happen here, right? It, it could be that this may cross like this. It's possible for it to cross like that. Or it could, it could do this, right, in the middle. So the middle is a little bit more complicated. So that's why for the middle, we may need more than one, just one x value to test there. 
So we may end up, what I may end up doing is I may end up testing zero, negative one, and one just to be on the safe side. So let's plug in negative six uh, into the graph, the function first. So let me rewrite the function. F of x is x squared plus two x plus eight over x squared plus two x minus 15. So let's plug in x equal, let's do at, let's do x is equal to negative six first. So f of negative six equals so negative six squared plus two times negative six plus eight negative six squared plus two times negative six plus or minus fifteen. So uh, six squared is thirty six, and then two times negative six is negative twelve. So I got thirty six minus 12 plus 8 and then 36 minus 12 minus 15. So in the top we get you know 32. In the bottom uh, we get 24 we should get 9. So 32 over 9. All right so that's a fraction so that's a little bit over 9 goes into 32 three times so a little bit over 3. So, so that means uh, when we have negative six, we get a little bit over three, like around here. So now we know how it behaves. It has to go like this and it has to go like this, right? Now let's test, let's, uh, let's do four first. Let's do the right side first and then we'll do the middle because the middle one's harder. So let's do four. Uh, F of four equals four squared, two times four, 4 squared, 2 times 4, minus 15. So we have 16 plus 8 is 24. So we get 32 on the top. Uh, 16 plus 8, that's 24. 24 minus 15 is 9. So we also get 32 over 9. Surprisingly enough, we get the same number. So we have basically the same thing going on on that side. Okay, so we have... Uh, it looking like that. Now let's look. Now let's plug in zero, negative one, and one. Okay, just to be safe. So let's do zero first because that's pretty easy. Uh, zero squared, two times zero. Zero squared, two times zero minus fifteen. So that gives you negative eight over fifteen. So that's a negative number. Uh, so around here, less than negative one. Now let's test negative one and then one. So f of one, we have one squared, two times one plus eight, one squared, two times one minus 15. So one plus two is three, three plus eight is 11 on the top. Uh, three minus 15 is negative 12. So we get negative 11 over 12 when, f is, when x is one. So that means it's a little bit below what we had earlier, around there, but it's still not equal to negative one yet. So let's plug in negative one. So negative one squared, two times negative one. Negative one squared, two times negative one, minus 15. So we have here one minus two plus eight, uh, seven. Uh, one minus two. Um, so negative 16, so negative seven over 16. Uh, which of course you know it's it's still not equal to negative one but it's still kind of low it's kind of like here oh uh, not there yeah this is going to be negative one over here uh, so yeah it's like around here so that means it kind of looks like it's doing this right it's kind of look like, looking like it's doing the u shape and so there's our graph. So if it looks like it's going like down on both directions, that means it's probably going to be doing the U shape. If it's uh, looking like it's going, you know, like uh, up here and then down there, it's probably doing like the cross shape where it's like that. Okay, so that's that can be a little bit more complicated. So that's why I would say, you know, do more points just to be on the safe side.
and that would be a calculator you know problem just plug it in and get the decimals on the calculator all right go ahead and I'll give it a try uh, see if you can sketch the following function all right so let's go ahead and do it so let's look at our vertical asymptote first so we set the denominator equal to zero and solve now this can be uh, this is one of those factoring ones where you like pull stuff out so we can pull out a 2x if we pull out a 2x we get x 2x times x is 2x squared if we pull out a 2 from 10 that's gonna be 5 so now we used a ZPP so 2x equals 0 x minus 5 equals 0 so divide by 2 on both sides x is 0 add 5 on both sides x is 5 so we got our uh, vertical asymptotes 0 and 5 and now let's do our horizontal asymptotes so the degree here is 2 the degree here is also 2 leading coefficient is 1 leading coefficient is 2 so a horizontal asymptote y equals 1 over 2 all right so now we can graph Uh, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, so we have 1 half is around here. We have uh, 0, x equals 0, which is the y-axis, and x equals 5. So we have two vertical asymptotes, one horizontal. So let's test, uh, let's test like negative 1. Let's test 1. Uh, we, may t we, may, we may need to test more than one in the middle, right? Because we have two regions, one, two, and three regions here. So let's test like uh, six as well. And we may need to test one, two, and three, just to be on the safe side, on the middle. Okay, so let's plug in. So let's rewrite our function. Right? Uh, so now let's plug in negative 1 first. So g of negative 1, negative 1 squared, 5 times negative 1, 2 times negative 1 squared, 10 times negative 1. Right? So we have negative 1 squared is 1, negative 5 times negative 1 is 5. So we have 1 plus 5 is 6, 6 plus 6 is 12. This would be 2, 2 plus 10 is 12. So we get 1. So when we plug in negative 1, we get 1, which means we're up here, which means that it behaves like that. So that part is easy. Let's do the 6, because that part will also be easy as well. So let's plug in 6. So g of 6, 6 squared, 5 times 6, 6 2 times 6 squared, 10 times 6. So we have 36 minus 30 is... Uh, 6, 6 plus 6 is 12, uh, 6 squared is 36, 36 times 2 is 72, 72 minus 60 is 12, so we also got 12, so 12 divided by 12 is 1, so when I plug in 6 I get 1, which means that it goes like this and like that, approaching the asymptote on that side. All right, so now let's plug in 1, 2, and 3. 1 squared, 5 times 1. 1 squared, 10 times 1. So 1 squared is 1. 1 minus 5 is negative 4. Plus 6 is 2. 2 minus 10 is negative 8. So this is negative 2 eighths or negative 1 fourth. That's a fraction that's reduced. Let's plug in 2 right away, and then we'll plug in 3, and then plug in the points. Two times 2 squared, 10 times 2. 2 squared is 4. 5 times 2 is 10. 4 minus 10 is negative 6. Negative 6 plus 6 is 0. All right, so that's pretty easy, 0. Now let's plug in 3. Uh, so we have 3 squared, 5 times 3 plus 6. 3 squared, 10 times 3. 3 squared is 9. 5 times 3 is 15. 9 
minus 15, it's negative 6, negative 6 plus 6 is 0 as well, surprisingly enough. Alright, so let's go ahead and uh, plot those points real quick. So we have here at 1, we have negative 1, 4, which is around here. At 2, we had 0. At 3, we had another 0. So that's telling me is that it's circling back around. So it's doing that U shape again, right? So it's going like this, and then probably goes up for a little bit, then goes back down. So that's what that's telling me. And we have our graph. All right, so basically, vertical asymptote set your denominator equal to zero. Horizontal asymptote use those three cases to determine which one you have. Identify both of those, and then test each region, you know, with a x value to the left to the right, uh, to determine how the graph looks like, and then that's how you graph it. I hope you found this uh, lesson informative, and I'll see you in the next one.